Okay, welcome back. So, um, one thing that I forgot to do in the last um, in the last video is to combine these. Okay, so right now these are two separate objects, and I want to combine them into one object. So if I select everything again, the hinge constraint is left out. So I do Control Left Click, and now everything's um, everything's included there. And now what I want to do is I want to use this little Group button at the top of either the model or the home menu. And if you press group, that turns it into one model. Everything's still there, but now it's all combined into one model, which is nice because, you know, it's it's one thing that you can um, kind of move around. So this is, becomes my motor, and um, this is what you should have saved to your toolbox. Okay, so now what we want to do in this video is we want to use this motor to move other objects. Okay, so let's get another object in here that we can move. And so I'm just going to include a sphere. I'm going to put it over here, move it away a little bit. And I'm going to change the color on this. I'm going to make this a nice green. And I'm going to change the size. Let's change the size to a 222, two, two, smaller. Okay. And this should be unanchored. Remember, anything that moves is unanchored. And I'm just going to call it sphere or green sphere. Okay, we got a green sphere. And uh, so now how do we attach it? How do we attach it to our motor? Well, what we use is something called a weld. And um, it's really easy to use. Let me move my camera though. One thing I wanna warn you about is do not have these pieces, like you could move this piece to where it was over here, but what's gonna happen is when this spins, it's gonna hit the spawn location and it's gonna stop. So make sure that it's clear of any other part. So I'm just gonna move it right there. Okay, so now how do we attach this to our motor? Well, we go into the model menu. Okay, make sure nothing is selected. So just click on click on empty space. And then we're gonna go here to the create button in, inside of the constraints section. And right here, it says weld. And that's what we wanna do. We wanna click on weld. And our little cursor turns into something different. I guess it's like a pen. I can't really tell what it is. But anyway, it, it's a different cursor. And what we do is we click on our uh, green sphere, and it doesn't matter where you click on it. And then you wanna click on the blue part, not the pink part. You wanna click on the blue part of your motor. And when you do that, if you have show welds on, it's gonna show a little green line there. Okay, and that's it. Now we've attached our green sphere to our motor and it should spin, if we hit play, it should spin, let's see. And it does, and I can go over here and I can see my green sphere spinning in space. Okay, so now you can see that it's rotating kind of up and down, right, or vertically. What if we wanted it to rotate in a different, in a different direction? Well, all you have to do, if you wanna do that, is rotate your motor. So let me show you how to do that. Okay, so I'm going to select my motor and I'm going to rotate it. So I'm gonna do the rotate button, rotate tool, and I'm gonna use the blue wheel to rotate it so that it points up, okay? And now with the blue part or with the whole motor kind of pointing up, this is going to rotate horizontally. And let me show you that. There it goes. So now we have a spinning green sphere that's rotating horizontally. And you could make this rotate in any direction that you want to, right? Right now I have the rotate, um, what do you call it? The rotate snap to grid on. If I turn that off and I rotate again, I can rotate this anywhere I want. So now I can rotate this to some, uh, some other angle and if I hit, play, watch what happens. And there it goes. And now it is rotating kind of at an angle. And that works. Okay. So you can do this. Um, you can attach anything to these motors that you've made. And I'm going to undo this. Um, okay. So now we have this motor, right? We have this motor in place. And it's spinning anything that we want. And we can actually spin more than one thing. 
So let's add something else. Let's add another shape. Let's add a, whoops, let's add a cylinder. Okay. And I'm going to change the size on this. Actually, you know what? I'll leave it that way. I'll change, I'll just change the color to like a yellow. There we go. And I'm going to move it. Let me move it slightly different. Yeah. Cause right now it's really close to my motor. So let me move it over here and let me move it sideways. Oh, and you know one thing? This is probably going to hit. So let me move it even further out. Yeah, let me move it out here. So it's going to move a lot. Okay. And again, we want to connect this to our motor. So what we do is make sure nothing's selected. Go to the Create button in the Constraints, constraints section of the Model menu and click on Weld. Okay. I'm going to click on my yellow piece. It gets highlighted. I'm going to click on the blue piece of my motor. And now we have a green line between there if you have show welds turned on. And if you hit play, oh, let me make sure my, yeah, it's not anchored. And if we hit play, we should see two pieces spinning. And they do. And let me make sure, oh, okay. So here it happened what I was telling you. It hit the spawn location and uh, it stopped. It stopped the motor. So it's not gonna be able to go. So let me, um. Let me just move that up slightly. So if I move it up and do play again, now it should be okay. And I don't know what will happen if it hits me. I might I might try to do that. Let's see what's going to happen if it hits me. It might actually do it. No. I think it's too far back. Let's see. Oh, it actually just passed right through me. Huh, crazy. So if it hits another part, it stops. But if it hits me... I wonder if I can jump on this thing. So that's kind of like, you know, what we want to do. We want to have these, um, whoops, let me try jumping on it. You should be able to jump on these. Let me just try this. Let me uh, change my camera angle and let's see if I can do that. I should be able to just walk on this thing. And, oh, it stopped. Let me make it bigger. <laughs> I really do want to walk on this for some reason. Um, I'm going to rotate this thing and turn it into a pad. Let me rotate this. Oh, and I should probably have my rotate tool on. Okay. And then I'm going to change the size on this. Um, I'm going to make it, I'm just going to do it here with this. Let me make this big so I can really jump on this. Okay, let's try this. See if I can jump on this thing. Because you should be able to jump on these things and then have them move you around. Except this thing is really going fast. So we might change the speed. Oh, there it goes. It worked. Okay, so now I am on this little yellow cylindrical pad. And let me zoom out. I am moving around. Okay. So this is actually good because this is kind of what I wanted to do. I wanted to make something. Oh, and um, there is like friction on these things. So you do kind of slide off uh, slowly because it's moving. Um, and actually every material has different properties for that uh, friction. Like you can imagine that glass or ice would be more uh, slippery than cobblestone, right? And they do. So that's something you can actually change, but um, I'm not going to not going to worry about that right now. So, so one thing that I do want to do though, is, um, we don't really want this motor showing up in our games, right? I mean, it's, it's not ugly or anything, but we usually don't care about the motor. We care about the parts that are being moved or rotated. So how do we make that disappear? Well, we're going to change a few properties on this. So if we go into the motor, uh, let me click off on those. Whoops. Okay. So if we go into the motor, <laughs> Oh, and you can see on the parts where I added a weld, now there's a weld constraint here, okay? But um, what I wanted to show you is that if you go into the motor engine, click on that, and the transparency, you can change that to one, that's fully transparent, gone. And on the motor spin, transparency one, gone. So now it's, it's invisible, okay? But you could still bump into it or hop on the motor. And so what you wanna do also is turn off another property. 
and that property is where is it can collide we want to turn off can collide now you will just pass right through it it'll be like it really is not there so make sure and turn off can collide on both of those okay and now if i push play let's see if this works and it does so now all we have are our spinning pieces and you know what that worked better it um it knocked me out of the way let me let me see, have it do it again nice okay so it actually interacts with me so i wonder why i'm not really sure when it was smaller why it just kind of passed through me but um this is working perfectly so if i jump oh i almost made it hold on let me see if i can get on it if i jump i should be able to land on this thing if i time it right and we go <laughs> And uh, just make sure I don't fall off. I'm going to get in the center. And now I am uh, spinning around on top of this little yellow cylinder. And I think, let me see. Yeah, yeah, look, I'm spinning off, sl slowly sliding off of it just because, you know, there's not enough friction to keep me on. So I would need to um, move back towards the center in order to not slide off. Okay, great. So it works. We have a motor, or you have a motor, that you can now reuse to spin anything that you want. And this is really the way that you want to do it. You don't want to recreate this motor every single time you want to rotate something. You just want one motor that you save to your toolbox that you can connect to anything that you want to spin. Okay? So that's actually what I wanted to show you. And you could use this to spin anything in any direction. You could actually attach a couple of these motors to each other, and then you would have really, really crazy motion going on but um let me think that's actually it for the first part of this constraints lesson or for the first constraints lesson in the next lesson we'll use a lot of these same kind of techniques to explore some of the other constraints we're going to mess or we're going to learn how to use things like the rope and the um let me see we're going to learn the rope and the rod the ball and socket We'll learn those for sure, okay? And uh, later, um, we'll learn some of the other ones. So I will show you that in the next video, and I will see you then.